My name is Heather Schantz and I am a retired nurse. For the final 17 years of my career, I worked in Calgary as a clinical nurse specialist in palliative care. Two years ago, I was diagnosed with metastatic cancer and believing that I was possibly in the final months of my life, I became the recipient of palliative care myself. Although this was not what I would have chosen, I came to be at peace with that prospect and prepared for my death. To my delight, not long after this diagnosis, I was offered a therapy that has worked extremely well and is currently giving me both time and quality of life that I did not expect. This is not because I am fighting. And when the day comes that therapy loses its effectiveness, and cancer causes my death, I hope that no one will say that I lost my brave fight. I am living with cancer. I will die from cancer and it's not my fault. As long ago as 1936, well-to-do women in the United States organized to raise public awareness about cancer and called themselves the Women's Field Army. They pictured themselves in trench warfare against a ruthless killer. Both the American and Canadian cancer societies were formed in this spirit. Are there benefits to using the battle metaphor when people have cancer? It seems to be effective in obtaining funding for cancer agencies. And because cancer treatment can be so frightening, some believe that the war rhetoric provides the resources needed to cope, to stimulate fortitude to finish treatments and withstand adverse effects. But metaphors may become prescriptions for how to act in particular situations. We're encouraged to believe that we will win the war if we only fight hard enough. The desire to keep fighting, not to lose, to be courageous may encourage physicians and patients to embark on burdensome therapies with little or no expected medical benefits. Yet opting out of therapy can leave patients racked with feelings of guilt and inadequacy. Sometimes the decisions made with the goal of fighting for life may result in the loss of the kind of life we wish to lead. There is a seduction that aggressive treatment is better treatment. And yet we know that palliative care can not only improve quality of life, but has been found to extend life in certain patients. So how might clinicians respond to the concept of fighting cancer or other illness? First, I suggest that we listen to the metaphors the patient is using. Hearing the battle metaphor may help us understand what the patient perceives to be out of control, what they fear. Secondly, respect the patient's metaphor. No metaphor is inherently good or bad. Each has its strengths and weaknesses and exists within the patient's context. If they use battle language, you may want to ask, what does fighting the disease look like? for you. You have been told that your cancer is not curable. Are there other ways you can imagine living with the illness? If you could not lengthen your life, how could you make it wider and deeper? Perhaps the patient can imagine other useful metaphors. What would some of those alternatives be? Journey works for some, but not for others. Some think Odyssey communicates more clearly. Most can identify with the roller coaster metaphor. Others feel that they are in a dance or in a relationship with an illness. I ask you to beware of jumping to battle language before exploring with patients what language works for them. Perhaps cancer and heart disease and organ failure are not battles to win 
or lose, but simply illnesses to live with and eventually to die from.